Hey guys! This video was requested by Granaboo03 like a while ago, and I'm finally getting around to it. Um, she asked if I could show all the traveler's notebooks that I've had, uh, that I've owned, and sort of the pros and cons of them and what to look for when you're shopping for one. Um, and I am figured I had time I would do that. I uh, don't own that many, and they're not very varied at all. But if you're interested, since it was requested, I figured I would show you. Um, so. You just get to look at my hands for a second because I do talk with my hands. The very first Traveler's Notebook I owned, I don't currently have with me. Um, I still technically own it, but I, I lent it to my mom and she it lives with her because um, I don't really use it. I bought a Foxy Fix Wanderlust Butterscotch. Wanderlust is the leather and butterscotch is the color. And I will link below a video where you can see that in action. Um, it was like a... the. In Chic Sparrow terms, it would be called a classic. It had no stitching or anything. It had a brown elastic. Um, and I just really wanted something basic to start with. I wanted just a piece of brown leather with no stitching or anything. Um, it was nice. It was a little bit stiff. And I thought that that was normal because it was described as being pretty soft. Um, and I don't know. Like, it was described as being similar to, like, the Chic Sparrow creme leather. I'm not sure if that's true because I haven't really compared them directly. Um, my mom has both, but she'd be able to tell you. But um, I found it to be kind of stiff and I would get the issue where like the um, the leather would make, it, it would want to make like a round spine and then I never had enough um, inserts in there that it would be held open by the inserts, if that makes sense. Like if this is the leather with the inserts holding it open. So basically it would look like a wedge shape, which I mean, is fine. It wasn't the aesthetic I was going for though. And I kind of was hoping that I could find something that would have more of a sort of square spine. Um, anyway, I um, used that, it was in a personal size. I used that for a good, maybe six months-ish. Um, and then one day, oh, and I got it off the Buy Sell Trade Group on Facebook. So it was uh, pre-owned, but not really pre-used much. I think they got it in like a mystery sale or something. Um, anyway, then one day I was browsing the buy sell trade group and I had been interested in trying out the Outlander leather from Chic Sparrow. So I went ahead and I found one that I got used. And it was a good deal. This is also personal size. And I was hoping for something that was softer that would um, sort of mold around the inserts better. And you can already see here the way that the, um, even without inserts in it, it has more of a sort of spine shape to it. Um, and it molds really nicely around because it's a very soft piece of leather. Um, this is also the deluxe edition, meaning that it has the pockets. That's what the terminology in Chic Sparrow terminology is. The Outlander is the leather. This color is called Verona. And the pockets are, um, yeah, it's called deluxe. So it comes with the three pockets in the front here, secretarial pocket in the back, and a pen loop. And I do use the pen loop on my deluxe Chic Sparrows. And um, yeah, I, I really love this leather. It was just so like soft and I, I love the way it molded around the inserts. And even if like, I don't know, it um, it's less of a teardrop shape and more of a triangle even if it's closed at this end but um yeah I was using like quite a lot of inserts actually at one point this thing weighed probably like two pounds because I was using this as my wallet as well um but when you're looking at Chic Sparrow the you want to look at like size and then leather type which is this is like I said the Outlander comes in a few you know what I was gonna say it comes in a few different colors but this leather has actually been discontinued it only comes back for um for limited releases so just keep that in mind <laughs> because the next one I got, uh, I bought from the uh, second chance sale, which is the sale that Shakespeare puts on every, maybe twice a year. They get rid of things that are like slightly, there's something wrong that didn't pass quality control. So I ended up with two other outlanders. I got a pocket size and a pocket plus that pocket plus I have sold now on the buy sell trade group. I no longer own it. Um, but I will link below the video of the unboxing where you can see me going into detail of how it looked. Um, but these are basically this, it's the same leather as this one. So this is Verona and this one is called wine. And so pocket is a smaller, um, insert size, personal 
is um, six and three quarters by three and three quarters. I, I don't remember. The pocket size is the field note size, and this is the size that I've sort of landed it on. This one's also deluxe, so it has the three pockets in the front, sucker channel in the back, and the pen loop. And then um, the pocket plus has six strings. It's the same, it fits the same size inserts, but more of them. So it's like a couple, like maybe an inch or two wider overall. So it fits more inserts inside it. Also in the second chance sale, I picked up a, a Nano. This size you'll see also, I think called micro in certain manufacturers. It's the tiny little ones. And these are great for wallets. Um, I would show you, but it has all my cards in it and stuff. This um, is also deluxe, so it has just one pocket in the front, one in the back. I use the back pocket for like cash in the front for my debit card. This leather is called Pemberley, and the color is Castle Rock. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head if this color still exists or if it's been discontinued, but it's this. It reminds me of an elephant skin, you know? <laughs> I think it's really nice. This Pemberley leather is um, a little bit stiffer than the Outlander. It's um, it's not squishy in the same way that the Outlander is. I think Outlander is um, oil tanned and Pemberley is vegetable tanned, whatever the difference is there. The inside is also a bit rougher, if that matters to you. The inside of this is a bit more like a suede and here it's a bit more like cardboard, um, but that's just the inside. The outside of the leather is very soft and supple, um, just not quite as much as, not quite as floppy as the Outlander but I really love using this for my wallet. The next journal that I wanted to get, I also got this off of Buy, Sell, Trade. This is actually a different brand. This is called Speckled Fonds. Um, and they do a lot of really interesting rustic things with these um, raw edges. So this has a pocket in the front. This leather is called Nude. Uh, this, the green leather here is called Tumbleweed Olive. And I believe the pockets on the inside are the same, but they feel different. Like on the outside, it feels a bit thicker for some reason and more stiff, whereas the inside pockets feel pretty soft and supple. Um, though it's hard to tell when there's like three leathers, layers of leather here. This is considered a field note size, which should be the same size as pocket. Like this same, a field notes is pocket. They just call it pocket in, in um, Cheek Sparrow. Other places will call it a field note size. Um, and it also still has the four strings, though you'll notice that they're strung differently with the speckled fonts, that they're strung just through the same two holes twice instead of through three holes. Um, and also, this notebook is about an inch, let's see, line that up. It is, um, yeah, just about an inch longer, just maybe a little bit less than an inch longer. So it fits more inserts that you'd have to get creative with the way you string them. So that's interesting. Um, I thought I would be using this pocket on the front more, but my phone doesn't fit there and I can't think of something else to put there. So um, I really enjoyed using this for when I did, but what I used it for was very, very stuffed and it was just sort of unwieldy to hold. So I ended up switching to something a little bit smaller. And around the same time I ordered this one, I found this one, which was like, I had been looking for this exact notebook. It was out of stock on the Shakespeare website and they had it um, on the buy sell trade, like it popped up and I was like, yes, that's the one, this is, it has to be. So this is also the Pemberley leather, the same as my little wallet. Um, you'll notice that it comes in kind of different textures, right? This has some sort of smaller, they call it pebbling. This one is much bigger pebble, pebbling. I think they say the smaller the pebbling, the more supple it is, or it could be the other way around. I don't know, but they're both pretty soft, but you know, not squishy quite the same way, like I was saying. Um, and so this color is called Angel, and you'll see that its stitching is white instead of black or brown. That's just kind of depends on what color you get. And then this one is considered the classic, meaning it doesn't have pockets. But with the classic, you can either get absolutely nothing, so it's just a square piece of leather, or you can get the stitching around the edges or and or a pen loop. So you can get either a riveted pen loop with or without stitching or the stitched in pen loop if you have the stitching. So that's the stitched in pen loop with the stitching. I really like, I've, I've come around to really enjoying the finished look of having the stitch edge. 
Um, even though I thought it would be weird because it's like it's not holding anything together. Um, it's still it gives it it's sort of a, a little bit of polish that I really enjoy. And this leather, I really like the color of it. I like that you can sort of as it ages, you can see it's a little bit darker, like here along the spine or the places where I hold it more. Um, in the places where it's in the sun, it kind of gets a little bit more of a rich color. And it's really nice. I, I mean, I really enjoy having more neutral colors. I was using this all the time and it was great. And even as far as colors go, this is a pretty neutral color. Um, but it is still red. And once I was getting into like the winter, it felt too autumn-y for me. So I wanted to go for something neutral that could pretty much be used all year round. And this was great for the spring um, as well because it's a nice lighter color, but it's also sort of neutral. So um, that is the most recent Traveler's Notebook I've bought. And then after this one, I uh, moved on to a different system, which I will be showing you in July. But basically this, is my collection like I said it's not very varied but um as far as like advice if you're looking for shopping at a, for a traveler's notebook um a lot of the terminology is going to vary a lot from manufacturer to manufacturer um so a lot of the big names like Chic Sparrow these three is a big one um Foxy Fix is also a big one they foxy fix numbers their sizes instead of naming them so it can be a little tricky but really what i recommend is you go to their websites to look at the sizing um so the first thing you want to think about when you're like deciding which do i want to get um material right you want to get something that's real genuine leather how high of a quality leather do you want or are you going to be happy with something that's just faux leather or do you want a fabric dory um that like people make them out of fabric and you can get some crazy awesome designs with that and go really interesting and intricate and wild with that or do you want something a bit more classic a bit more subdued that kind of thing um then second thing is size so really what you want to just do is look at a size chart i've linked one below and figure out like how much paper real estate you need. Maybe you have a planner that's a certain size that you like. Maybe you like the personal size and rings. So you want to try personal size in a traveler's notebook. Or, you know, maybe you're already used to field notes. Maybe you've been using a, like a Leuchtturm notebook and you want to stick with A5. Then that's great. Then you know what you want. Otherwise, you might want to play around with like cut out some paper um, and make a little notebook and just play around in that little, you know, notebook for a while, decide if that's enough real estate for you before you decide to make these purchases. Because with the real leather, it can get a bit pricey. Then once you've decided what size and what kind of leather material, um, consider whether you want to get pockets, whether you want something that looks like this with the external pockets, whether you want internal pockets, or whether you want it to just be a normal piece of leather. And you're always allowed to change your mind once you decide, uh, you know what? Like I started out not wanting any pockets, then I decided I would enjoy some, and then I decided that I wasn't using them even as much as I thought I would. Um, so I've kind of gone back and forth, uh, swung back and forth a little bit on that. Um, and then, you know, consider the brand you want. Some brands have more like recognition and prestige or whatever. Others are really great for customizing. You can um, really request whatever you want with certain brands. Others like the Chic Sparrow pretty much have limited customizability. But for me, I think that makes sense because it just it's easier to understand exactly what's on offer so that you can make a decision and not have to fret over every detail and maybe second guess yourself, you know. So that's fine for me. And then finally, um, where are you going to get it? Because you can buy it straight from the manufacturer or you can look out for buy sell trade groups um, I will link the one below where I got these um, where I got this one and this one and I think I bought this from a different one I don't remember but there's two different ones um, that I can link below one that's just for Chic Sparrow and one that is for all traveler's notebooks and so you can get a used traveler's notebook that maybe has been loved a lot of times you're going to pay roughly the same amount as they paid um but with shipping is free or something like that just to kind of compensate especially if it's something that hasn't been used a lot but the benefit to that especially if it's like a custom or it's something that's um difficult to get your hands on you don't have to wait as long for shipping which can be really great especially you know some of these brands make stuff to order and if you don't have to wait for that that can be a benefit um and in other cases you're just 
you're, you're getting something that's been pre-loved and that you can get for a pretty good price. Like this one was loved a little bit more when I got it. And so I was able to, um, to save some good money on it and have, you know, a new notebook in my collection. So those are all of my bits of advice for those of you who are new to Traveler's Notebooks completely and wondering where to even get started. Uh, check out those links below for a couple of references and resources. Um, and for those of you who are a bit more experienced, who have much more embarrassing collections than I do, um, or don't, don't be embarrassed. It's a beautiful thing to collect. Um, but for those of you, go ahead and comment below with any advice about picking out a Traveler's Notebook that you think I might have forgotten because I have limited experience with different brands. I've really only seen these three, the uh, Foxy Fix, Cheek Sparrow, and Speckled Fawns, and only a limited selection of those. So um, there's, shout out your favorite brands below because there are some really great mom and pop shops on Etsy um, or just elsewhere that have their own independent websites. I really don't understand how like Sojourners I've heard of are beautiful, but I don't understand a lot of the terminology no matter how hard I've tried to understand it so that's kind of the thing like you get into a brand figure out what their terminology is and then you know what to buy so it's uh, yeah play around with it enjoy yourself and I hope that you find the traveler's notebook of your dreams thank you guys for watching uh don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one okay bye